Hello, my name is John Hodgman, and this is The Last Word. Thank you for joining us. As a newsman, I've been lucky. Lucky not just to get some great interviews, but often the last interviews given by some American geniuses just before they die. We like to call our program The Last Word. Here's a chance for some of the great artists of our time at the very, very, very end of their lives to reflect, to remember, and maybe even correct the record. Tonight, we celebrate the legendary musician Dewey Cox. We'll speak to the key forces in his life, his wives, his fellow musicians, and of course, the man himself. Dewey Cox, a name synonymous with the American songbook itself. His signature hit, Walk Hard, is known in a thousand different languages across the globe, and yet he was more than just a musician. He was an iconoclast, a rebel, a father, and at the time of our interview, a very, very old man. As he's lived, and dare I say, walked hard, he's blazed a trail across the American landscape that is indelible and shall never be forgotten. Here at the end of the trail, I'm very glad to turn to Dewey Cox and say, Dewey, any last words? <laughs> well, it's a little early for that, isn't it, John? Well, I don't, I don't know about that. It's good to have you here, and yeah. welcome. You look good. Welcome to all of you at home as well. Yeah. I'm going to use a big word now. Mm. Don't be afraid. I know a few. And the word is legacy. I don't know what that means. What do you see as the Dewey Cox legacy? He was a good man. He, he tried to reach out. He failed in many ways early in life because of a bad upbringing and a bad father. I ain't got no room in my house for no devil spawn. Oh, you be careful now, you hear? Before you go and say something you're gonna regret for the rest of your days. Like what? Like the wrong key, Dad? Paul's right. Springbury ain't big enough for me no more. I reckon it's time for Dewey Cox to move on. But you're only 14. You've come a long way from Springbury, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, in miles and in uh, years and experiences, yeah, I suppose About I how many miles exactly, if I were to oh, just put you on it right now? Uh, 1,750, I believe. Wow, you've really got that down. If you don't count the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> You're famous for your two-mile-long driveway. Yeah, yeah. You laid the, the asphalt yourself, I believe. Yeah, I dug that with the boys. I've Why got... is it important for you to maintain a connection with the ground and with asphalt? To answer your question, I, I think I'd have to go back to that first song I wrote, Walk Hard, and, uh, and that, was, uh, that was related to the ground because in order to walk hard, mm -hmm. you need something to bounce up against. So the earth has been good to me. Thanks for joining us again. I'm here with Sam McPherson. Welcome, Sam. Thank you for coming by. It was good to be here. I, I don't usually, I don't even watch TV. Tell me the story of how you first met Dewey Cox. He was a janitor at a club that I worked at. And uh, he, we played for this singer, Bobby Shad. He was just sitting here. Yeah, he was a great guy. I thought he was dead. I didn't know he was still alive. Yeah, I thought he was dead too, but apparently he's still alive, living in Winnipeg. We had to fly him down. That's great. Bobby, you were there at the night of uh, Dewey Cox's big break. You were headlining at Leroy's nightclub. Mm -hmm. You were the star of the show. Mm -hmm. They used to uh, uh, scream my name, uh, Bob Shaw, I'll come out there, and uh, everybody just... Okay, uh, just but all of a sudden, that lovely. would change. Mm -hmm. You would lose your voice. Dewey filled in for uh, Bobby. This first time we're fitting to do is, uh, well, it's about... Uh, <laughs> it's about when your woman catches you. You they know. plucked from obscurity a young Caucasian moppist named of Dewey Cox to come in and play your songs to your audience. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And really, your career hasn't really existed since then. Mm, that's, 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 that's about the, uh, the, the long and short of what happened. He, uh, he tore the place up. And I said, I'm gonna hook my wagon to that star right there. And when he sang that first song that night, You Gotta Love Your Negro Man, mm -hmm. what was going through your mind? I thought he was gonna get killed. Really? At first. Why? Well, you don't wanna be a white person saying Negro in a room full of Negroes. Why? 
just bad, bad karma. You're not actually doing any music now, are you? I still, I still sing. I don't, I don't play as much as, as I used to, cause. Uh, I would think not. I didn't even know you were alive. Oh, uh, you know, I get that all the time. Nobody ever said it's gonna be easy. It's hard, but I plan on walking. Oh, I'm gonna walk. Hard. Walk hard. How does Dewey Cox write a Dewey Cox song? Is there a ritual? Like no life at all. Guilty as charged. Don't you dare write a song right now, Dewey! Is there something that needs to happen? Something you need to be wearing? Something needs to happen. Something needs to happen. Dewey. If something needs to happen, I'll be the one to do it. If something needs to happen, why don't you go and screw it? Just like that, John. That's how songs happen. Oh my. Someone, was... will, someone will, in the midst of a conversation, mm -hmm. will utter a phrase. I'll hear that, and some, and a little bell goes off. Ding! I hear that bell, and I know, good God, here it, here it comes. Wow. Excuse me. Knew we should have put more glue in there. Now, I'm going to bring up what might be a, a little bit of a sore subject for you. There have been rumors. All right, you want to know about the balls, all right? The ball. Is that, is this a, is that what this is going to turn to now? I my don't. testicles. Is that really what we're going to discuss on national television, John? Is my testes? I. Uh, all right, let me say it for the record. I have the largest balls in rock and roll. If you would just let me play one of my songs that I wrote, I think you'll like it a whole lot better. You have failed conclusively. It's over. And if somehow you were able to sing a song now. Bringing these boys together who you haven't even met. I've been talking with the friends, the foes, the lovers of Dewey Cox, and now we come to the rest of his band. I really should have your names here. I just, I'm sorry. I have a, you have me at a disadvantage. You're, which one of you is the drummer? Uh, neither one of us is the drummer. Sam's the drummer. Oh, right. I talked to him. Funny guy. Yeah. Okay. In your own words, tell me about the first time that you guys laid eyes on Dewey When you Cox, say you own words, him. like words that we've made up. As long as, yeah. I can use my word shizzle cack. Yeah, you can use that. He makes up lots of words as part of his I make up words and try to sell fiction. them. Yeah. You're, yeah, well, you're a caution. Go ahead. Well, when we met Dewey, uh, it, was, it was in the recording studio. Uh, we would record all day with different, different fellas. Uh, there was something about this this boy is different. He had a special shine. I was not impressed. I didn't think too much of him off the bat. Why not? Oh, he just seemed like a dullard. Yeah. And a lot of enthusiasm. I doubted. It didn't seem like there was a lot of talent to back it. And then he wanted to play uh, one of his own songs. Yeah. And this would be the song that would <clears throat> that would change his life and yours. There's a big group of Jews in the recording studio. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. And they were there. Mm-hmm. Whatever they a, do. There was yeah. a Jew in the green room, too. I was willing to open my mind because these Jewish gentlemen brought you in here. They usually have good taste. Today, your performance has shaken my belief in the Jewish people. Well, there's nothing I would like more, sir, than to restore your faith in Judaism right now. Did you know he was going to play that song? No. We'd never heard it before or anything. So you just had to follow along. We picked up and found something there that day, it was magic. He led us, and we didn't, we'd never even heard the lyrics to the song before, but we somehow knew how to sing them. Yeah. Wow. Dude, we don't know this song. You just follow me. Jesus was whispering the lyrics in our ear. It was like Jesus. Despite those Jews in the recording studio. Well, you gentlemen know Dewey better than anyone. Mm. What do you think it means to walk hard? When I think of walk hard, I think of literally walking and slamming your feet down as hard as you can with every step you take. Literally walking? Literally walking hard. That and walking with an erection. Okay. You think that's what it was about? That's what comes to my mind when I hear it. I don't know if that's what it was about. I think it was more about his life being hard, not walking down the street in a hard way. We sang that for... 20 years, you thought it was about walking hard down a sidewalk? I would always have a little movie in my mind. 
Walk hard. Hard. Walk hard. Down life's rocky road. Walk bold. Hard. That's my creed. My goal. You're a spiritual man? Well, I am spiritual in the sense that I am connected to my God. You made three overtly spiritual records, the yes, most those famous are, one being God Hard. God Hard, and then that was followed by Christ It's Hard. Yes. And then the last one was just Gospel Cox. That was my, fo that was my most famous one. And, and, and yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that, John, because a lot of people overlook those spiritual records and they like to dismiss them yes. as the work of a fanatic. But I can tell you this, Gospel Cox has more original songwriting and more heartfelt emotion than I think the sum of my other records. Tell me how you first met Dewey Cox. We grew up in the same small town, so I had known about Dewey since he was a boy. Um, I knew that he had um, matured a lot faster than the other boys in class, but we didn't know each other that well. Uh, it wasn't until he uh, sang that song at the high school talent show. You're a girl, but make no mistake. Yours is the hand I want to take, so please. He pointed at me, and then I obviously became his girlfriend and then his wife. So, you fell in love with the music? I fell in love with being pointed at. Tell me about his music at this early part of his career. Um, frankly, at that point, he was not very good at all uh, and never really got much better. He never made it as a musician. Which, it's so sad. Again, he did, he, he did make it as a musician. He be, mm -hmm. became the preeminent American songsmith of his, of his era. No, he didn't. Okay. I am starting to think that maybe you don't believe in me. I do believe in you. I just know you're gonna fail. Darlene Madison walks into mm, mm, Dewey's mm, life mm, and your lives. Mm, mm, mm. She had a very fine body. It's like the woman that uh, broke up the Beatles, uh, Linda McCartney. Mr. Cox, I heard you were looking for a new backup singer for your new duet. You heard right. I'm joined now by Darlene Cox, the wife of Dewey Cox, and arguably the muse of Dewey Cox. Darlene, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Is that fair to say, the muse of Dewey Cox? I think that's quite accurate. How did you first meet Dewey? Well, I saw a notice in the paper that he was looking for a new backup singer. Mm -hmm. And so I went into the little theater and, uh, and I just sang my heart out, and it worked. So, your first uh, hit, duet. Was there a double meaning to that song? I don't think so, no, why? In my dreams you're blowing me some kisses That's one of my favorite things to do I'm going to bring up what might be a, a little bit of a sore subject for you. The rumors that, that when you married your, your wife, Darlene, the love of your life, that, uh, yeah. that when you were married, there are, there are some who say that you were not yet divorced from your first wife, Edith. Now... Well, some would, say, some would say that because it was in every newspaper across the world for about two years. That's why they would say it. How did you learn that he was already married? How did you meet his first wife, Edith? Edith. Surprise! Edith! Who are you? I'm his wife. That's who I am. No, you're not. I'm his... Good Lord, you're already married? After all this time, what do you think of Darlene? The funny thing is, I've actually grown to admire her quite a bit. Um, and as much as you can admire someone who married your husband while you were still married to him. Um, but we've actually become good friends. Be candid. Tell me, tell me what you really think. Because I think she's a whore. Well, she is. Okay. She is a whore. But I admire her nonetheless. Uh -huh. Do you still keep in touch with Edith today? Oh, yes, I do. She's really? a lovely woman. She I called you a whore. A, well, I think she's a skinny bitch. When did you first realize that Dewey Cox wasn't exactly taking care of himself? I mean, with the drugs. I uh, realized when he was in the diaper on top of the building that 
I had to leave for a short time. I thought that was awesome. That's music legend. Dewey Cox on top of the building. Drugs. Something you've known about your whole life. Oh yeah, I had a love affair with drugs for a while. and Yeah, most people do. You were 20 years old. You had already had your first number one hit. Yeah. You had your whole life ahead of you. You had a family. Mm. And I might argue you threw it away for drugs. Well, I never threw away my family. Well. I may have forgotten their names. I could not keep track. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't forget them, though. Mm -hmm. You know, I joke about it. Yeah. I, I think it's as funny as the next guy when somebody gets all hopped up on PCP. It is. I funny. love to see sweaty, naked people running around like they think they're dinosaurs and such. Of course, we all But uh, I don't mean to make a lot of it because it was, a, it was a terrible chapter in my life. That was a dark period for you, wasn't it? You think so, doctor? What are y'all doing in here? We're smoking reefer. And you don't want no part of this shit. What are y'all doing in here? It's called cocaine. And you don't want no part of this shit. We doing pills, uppers and downers. They're the logical next step for you. I want some of that shit. So I don't think I'm making any headlines when I point out, we all know it, Dewey Cox did a lot of drugs. I don't know nothing about that. Uh, okay, <laughs> I, was just, I was just gonna ask, you know, how do you think that happened? I have no idea. Really? You a cop? How was it watching Dewey hurt himself in this way? Because he was doing a lot of drugs, was he not? A lot of the times it would hurt, but a lot of the times it would be pretty funny too. I'm sorry, how? How do you mean oh, funny? Oh, you know how people are when they're on drugs a lot and yeah. alcohol. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. You see a man vomit and he thinks his vomit's a pillow, that's funny. <laughs> that's true, that's true. That was yeah, funny. That's, fu that's good, that's true. Have you ever done drugs, sir? <laughs> I mean, you are a drummer. What are you saying? Drummers are drug addicts, everyone knows that. Pill heads. Let's say this, all right. I touched a lot of people in my life, physically, mentally, mm -hmm. musically, mm -hmm. spiritually, mm -hmm. athletically, amorously, mm. and I can't keep track of all of them. We had some fine times on the road, you know, those I can remember were good ones. Could you shut up? I'm trying to have sex with these women down here. Who's that? Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's Sam. When you were on the road. On the road? Did you yeah. have sex with a lot of women? I would get Dewey's, uh, polos. Uh, I'm sorry? Passed out leftovers. Oh, I see. He wouldn't allow us to have first dibs on any woman that was conscious. I had relations with a 15-year-old girl once. When was that, Theo? Well, I was probably 35. Theo, you don't want to talk about that. I don't even remember that. I do want to talk about it. It was one of the best experiences of my life. And Dewey did what he wanted, and there came a time when he broke up the band. What, what happened? There? Well, Dewey just started to change and he started doing music that was not appealing to me. Black Sheep, that was the song that he was working on. Yeah. Never finished, never released. What was happening that caused that song to break up the band? Uh, drugs. Right. And uh, foreign fellas brought in. Lots of foreigners. Foreign instruments. Strange stuff. Lots of so drugs you, and foreign elements. Right. Yeah. Some say you were reinventing music with what you were doing. What happened? What went down? Oh, a whole mess of LSD. Um, I tried my best. I was trying to push new ground. I was trying to push the envelope and break new ground. And I had flown over, as I recall, eight or ten pygmy bushmen. And who's done that? You know, take that, Brian Wilson. And then the band broke up. Dewey Cox says, no more, you're fired, and that's when it all ends for you. In 20 years, not once have you thrown a woman my way. You don't think we like cheating on our wives, too? And you never once paid for drugs. Not once. And that's where sort of history stops for Sam McPherson. No, not really. Tell me about that day. Where was it? What happened? How'd you feel? You, you ever been in the middle of a blowjob and uh, 
you know, right at the peak, the top of the blowjob, let's call it. And uh, the phone rings, and sure. you never get back to the blowjob. Sure. It's that feeling. It was a lot like it's that. terrible. So what happened to Edith Cox after her marriage ended and the interesting part of her life was over? I moved to Taos. I made turquoise jewelry. Um, and now I live with a much younger, swarthy gentleman. Our mm -hmm. relationship is um, it's primarily sexual. So oh. It's a good life. In fact, he's here right now. Hi. Hi. Um, his name is uh, John Mayer. Uh, hey, come on in. I, you're doing great. You're doing great. How are you? I, listen, I, you know, I've been in a few relationships in the past in the press, and my line has always been no comment. Um, I just want you and, and everyone to know that I do have comments. I, have a, I look at this woman, and I have a lot of comments. I have a couple questions, but mostly comments. And then there's the love that we make to be at her garden and bring her petals to full flora, to bring her to a blossom, and then, and then pick that blossom with my penis. It's, it's more than I can take sometimes, but... You're a man of nature, aren't you, Dewey? Yeah, I sure am. I sure am. When was the first time you saw an automobile? I just feel like uh, I've been blessed in so many ways, from the singing to the songwriting to the sausage. My life has been blessed. The, the, the sausage. Oh, the, the line of sausages. Yeah, I break the sausages. Yeah. And most of the kids, I'm, I'm sure half the people out here know me from a sausage. What's for breakfast? Hi, I'm Dewey Cox. And in my house, it's Cox sausages covered in maple syrup. And if you've got some hard walking to do, and let's face it, who doesn't? Why not start your day right? by biting into a juicy cock sausage. They're farm fresh and hickory smoked right here on the farm in the big cock smoker. Cock sausage. It doesn't say cock unless I say it tastes like cock sausage. If it ain't hickory smoked, it ain't a cox. Tell me about Dewey's sausage. Dewey's sausage was huge. It was such an important thing in his life. His sausage brought a lot of joy to a lot of people. I ate Dewey's sausage every morning. As you know, our program is called The Last Word. If you were to be given one last word to describe Dewey Cox, what would you say? And is this a word that I can make up? Yeah, that would be fine, sure. You go ahead, Ron. Clarmatron. Did you make that up or is that an element? I think I made it up. So when I say the name Dewey Cox, what do you th what do you think? He can suck my dick. Bobby Shad, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming mm -hmm. by. How are your fingers today, by the way? My fingers are fine. You know what they fine for? Grabbing Dewey Cox's head while he sucks my dick. How would you summarize the man, the legend, known as Cox? Well, I think Dewey's a good man. I think he's a good, honest man, but he's difficult. He's very, very difficult, very difficult. But he's a good man, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. All right, very good then. But he's difficult. So if it were just one word, uh, it would be? Good man, difficult. One word, please. Meal ticket. Is that two words or one word? Maybe hyphenated. Yeah. Be. Have you come up with your word? Shamackle. It's one of my favorite words. So would you say that you've changed the world? Have I changed the world? That's my question. Yes. Yes, I have. Where does time find Dewey Cox now? You're here. I just have a... I got you. Hip. I'm all right. Uh, I'm yeah. all right. I got a trick let hip. Me, let me, let me, let me, let me. I don't know. Let me help you out. You get off me. I said I had a trick hip, didn't I? Ugh. All right. My apologies. Yeah, that's all right. Are you, are you okay then? I'm fine, I'm Great. fine. I'm good. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Dewey Cox, so many words to describe him. Difficult, a good guy, kingly, magnificent, genius, shemackle, 
As always, the last word is reserved for me. And I'm going with Schmackle. My name's John Hodgman. Good night. Walk hard, hard down life's rocky road. Walk bold, hard at my creed, my cold. I've been scorned and slandered and ridiculed too. Had to struggle every day my whole life through. See my share of the worst that this world can give. But I still got a dream and a burning rage to live.